Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be trying to kind of put together the most powerful Odroid single board computer in the world. And uh, to do this, you can see that we've got some pretty gnarly stuff here on the table. And basically, in order to get this up and running, what we're using here is the all-new Odroid H3+. Plus. It's got a quad-core 3.3 gigahertz Intel CPU. And I've connected a brand new liquid-cooled NVIDIA RTX 4090 to this over an M.2 slot. And I really wanted to see what this thing can do. Now, there's no doubt that this is a huge bottleneck for the 4090. I mean, the M.2 slot alone, but especially the CPU we have here with the H3+. Plus. By itself, this little single board computer is actually pretty decent. I've done a couple videos. I've showed off Windows performance and Linux performance. So if you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, I mean, since we do have eGPU support over the M.2 slot on the H3+, Plus, I figured we'd go ahead and throw the biggest, baddest GPU at it right now. And I do want to give a big shout out to Micro Center for sending this over. I wouldn't have been able to get my hands on one of these 4090s without their help, and I do have a lot of testing planned with this 4090, so if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. But uh, yeah, when it comes to Micro Center, they've got real brick and mortar stores, so you can actually go into the store and put your hands on the product before you purchase it, and their staff can definitely help you put something together. Or you can head over to their website and use their new PC builder. This is going to ensure that all of the parts are going to work together. It's really easy to use, you're just going to choose your CPU, your motherboard, RAM, GPU, case, power supply, and so on and so on. You can also make sure that everything's in stock at a store near you, so if you're interested in checking the PC builder out or just heading over to Micro Center, I will leave links in the description. Okay, so with this whole setup here, I'm running Windows 11 Pro, and I'm going to be running some benchmarks. We're also going to be testing out some games, but yeah, I mean, it's not lost on me that this is really going to be bottlenecked. It's just something that I personally wanted to check out. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the new Odroid H3 Plus for the CPU, we've got that Pentium Silver N6005. We've got four cores, no extra threads, and a clock up to 3.3 gigahertz. And from the BIOS, we can set it to basically unlimited mode, so it will do 3.3 on all four cores indefinitely, as long as you can keep it cool enough. And we've got this Noctua fan right on the unit itself. I've also got 16 gigabytes of RAM installed with the H3 Plus running in dual channel. And of course, we've got that RTX 4090. This thing has 24 gigabytes of VRAM and it does pull quite a bit of power, so I'm actually using a 750 watt power supply strictly for the GPU. It definitely gets a little overcomplicated adding a GPU to a single board computer or a mini PC over M.2. There's quite a bit that you need to get this up and running. So I wanted to give you a look at this setup and basically what we've got here is a PCIe X16 dock that goes to M.2. This is made by a company called ADT Link. You can pick these up on Amazon. And it's coming really handy for a lot of projects like this. But uh, as you can see, we've basically just got a dock here. We've got a ribbon cable going over to the H3 Plus. And in turn, this is plugged right into the M.2 slot on the bottom of the unit. And remember, you're never going to power a GPU over an M.2 slot. So uh, we do need extra power here. And luckily, this dock does support a bunch of different power inputs. And the RTX 4090 can definitely pull some power. Just take a look at what NVIDIA had to do here. The 4000 series uses a new adapter and we've got four 8-pin connectors going in. So four PCIe 8-pin connectors going to this card to power it from a 750 watt power supply. And for this setup here, a 750 watt power supply is going to be plenty because all we're powering is the GPU. And with a lower end CPU like this, it's really not going to allow that GPU to shine. So we're never going to pull over like 350 watts with this unit here. But if I was to do a build, I'd go with a much larger power supply, really depending on the CPU I'm going to be pairing up with the 4090. So the first thing I did was just run a couple benchmarks. I kind of wanted to get a baseline here. 3D Mark Fire Strike, we got a total score of 14,083. And yeah, this is definitely holding that 4090 back. I just kind of want to put this into perspective for you. Recently, I did a build with this card and the brand new 13900K from Intel. Total score there, 48,546. So we're definitely losing a lot of performance with that 4090 over that M.2 adapter. Final one I ran here was Time Spy. We got a total score of 6,595. And when that 4090 is connected properly and paired up with a high-end CPU, 34,010. I mean, it's pretty incredible how much performance we're losing, but I still want to see if we can game on this thing. And first up, we've got Skyrim Special Edition. 
4K high, and at Ultra, I was around 55 FPS, and it really comes down to that CPU just not having enough performance. Taking a look at Afterburner, up in the top left hand corner, you can see that the CPU is pulling a maximum of around 9 watts. It's normal for this CPU here, we can't really get any more out of it. We're maxed out at 3.3 gigahertz on all four cores, and that's about it. Next on the list, we've got The Witcher 3, and this did much better than I thought it was going to do. 4K Ultra with no hair works. We were definitely able to get over 60 FPS with this little CPU here. And again, take a look at Afterburner. We're at 9 watts on the CPU, but uh, if you take a look at the GPU wattage at the very top, it does peg out at around 180, but this isn't even half of it. You know, if we were able to really stress this out, we could pull a lot more with the 4090. Moving over to World of Warcraft, 4K, and the graphics level is set to 10. I've also got the frame cap turned off. I thought we'd get over 100 with it, and I know we've got that really low-end CPU, but I figured it would do a little better than this. Here's Overwatch 2 at 4K Ultra, and again, kind of just like The Witcher, this did much better than I thought it would. I know it's not the hardest game to run, but yeah, I mean, just keep in mind what we're working with here. We've got plenty of GPU power for any of these games that we tested. It's all really going to come down to if that CPU can hang. Here's Doom Eternal, and going into this, I figured it would do a great job, given that it's using the Vulcan back in. It tries to offload as much as it can to the GPU. And we're at 4K Ultra here. I got an average of 78 FPS. Okay, so what we've taken a look at so far hasn't performed horribly, and you know, I wouldn't build something like this specifically for gaming, this was really just a test to see what we could do. But with these next two games, they're, uh, you know, new AAA games, and they really do require a pretty beefy CPU. Here's Spider-Man Remastered, we're at high settings, and to tell you the truth, going down to low all the way up to ultra doesn't make much of a difference at all because we just don't have the CPU power. And the same goes for Cyberpunk 2077. It doesn't matter if you go down the low or up to even ultra ray tracing with this, you're going to get the same frame rate because that CPU just can't hang with this 4090. So going into this, I knew the RTX 4090 was going to be bottlenecked pretty bad over M.2 and that Pentium Silver just not holding up. I mean, it's just not a gaming CPU. But I could see somebody adding like a GTX 1050 or a 1030 to a system like this. That way you could get away with a Pico power supply, keep it really small. And if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. Like I mentioned, since I already had this stuff laying around, I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try and just see what it did. I mean, it wasn't great, but it definitely upped the GPU performance on the all-new Odroid H3+. Plus. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Odroid H3+, Plus, you know, minus the RTX 4090, because I really want to get this back into my main rig, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.